Hi everyone, uh, this is Anna. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my art portfolio for college. Um, so I applied to a couple of art schools. I also applied to a lot of university as like an art major. So I basically use this portfolio for all of them. And so um, the ones that are probably the most relevant in this case is um, Pratt. And then I also applied to the Chicago Art School, um, S-A-I, yes, S-A-I-C. Um, I also applied to Parsons, um, and then I applied to SVA as well. And then I also applied to a couple other of like state colleges and then some other colleges, um, but those aren't art schools, so I'm not gonna uh, waste your time with mentioning those. I essentially got into all of the art schools that I did apply for though, um, with a couple of scholarships as well, so I'm very grateful about that. And I decided that I wanted to share my portfolio and have a little bit of insight into um, what a quote-unquote good accepted college portfolio is. Um, to be honest, I really just kind of want to share um, this portfolio because I'm really proud of it and it took out so much time and energy and stress. So it's only right that I use it for some content, you know? Um, so for all of these art schools, there's like different, there's slight differences between each of them. But for today, I'm gonna be showing you my Pratt um, portfolio because that is the school I'll be attending. So I thought it was only correct that I show you guys that portfolio. Um, so for Pratt, I submitted 18 pieces. The requirement was anywhere from zero to 25. So I think 18 is like around a good number. I think you should be closer to the, you know, you should go from like 15 to 20-ish. Um, the five extra for Pratt is because they wanted figure drawings, which I'm not really including in this, but um, usually I think 15 to 20 is like a good set amount that you should have art pieces wise. And yeah, so let's get onto the video, let's get onto the portfolio. Um, this is gonna be kind of like a two-parter and in the next video I'll be talking about my high school stats and um, all the other kind of like essays and extracurricular things that I included along with this portfolio. That applies more greatly towards other colleges so that's why I'm separating the videos or else this video will be way too long. <laughs> uh, without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so for the first piece that I submitted, I'm gonna put it on screen over here. scared me okay um so this first piece is titled bloom and it is a wire sculpture um it is actually on my wall right there if you can see that um next to the lotion the bath and body works lotion um essentially this piece is uh about being unique um the main point of it is that i kind of wanted to uh have the first piece be a big symbolism piece and so this piece is symbolic of kind of me growing, uh, that's why it's titled Bloom, and I pointed out that the every curve of the wire is unique to this specific sculpture itself, and this flower is unique to itself, and um, the shadow behind it kind of guides the flower in creating its new petals, and so it was just kind of um, a statement that I was going to continually be myself and be unique and grow in the best of ways throughout my journey um, onwards. So yeah, <laughs> as this piece. Uh, next, moving on, is this piece called Harmony. And it's called Harmony because I was inspired by the yin yang symbol. And to me, balance is a really important uh, motif. I use it a lot in my art. And so this one talks about the balance between my identities. Um, so I'm Asian American and that in itself is a big clash of identities. And I also um, am a lover of the arts, <laughs> clearly. Uh, but then I also have a big appreciation for academics and sciences and kind of STEM related fields. And so um, a lot of my different characteristics, I think clash with each other a lot. Um, they're kind of very polarizing and because of that uh, I think I've had to learn to find a balance in between both of my kind of different identities and um, that's kind of what this art piece speaks about. The point in the middle is essentially the point 
of harmony between uh, the two polarizing identities, which um, as symbolized by the two strands of tool, 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 as symbolized by the two strands of tool going out in different directions, one is clearly a lot more graceful and one is a lot more kind of strong and brisk. Um, and I personally believe it's kind of masculine feeling. And so I was trying to contrast the two of those along with this uh, center point in the middle. So this piece is my largest piece in the portfolio. It's uh, 49 by 27. And so I actually did it on a cork board and it was my first time doing a piece this big. And so it was very, very fun. And um, I thought it was pretty striking. So that's why I included it as the second piece. Um, they say that you should include your best piece first and last. So um, my first couple pieces are kind of like my best piece and this, so is my last couple pieces. Moving on. We're getting into more traditional media now. So this piece is called Addicted and it's a part of my sustained investigation, my 2D, my AP 2D design sustained investigation. Um, and so this piece kind of talks about how it's symbolizing how we live in a very unrealistic world sometimes and we kind of emerge ourselves in false realities um so like instagram and then like social media and just being so caught up in those type of things and so our other kind of more rational self will come and know that but um it's hard to kind of pull yourself up from that and so that's kind of what this piece points to symbolically um i also think just visually it's one of my favorite pieces and I was very proud of how I did the hands on this piece because I genuinely hate drawing hands. Um, but I think I pulled them off pretty well on this piece. So I'm very happy about that. Um, and looking back at it, I think this piece reminds me a lot of um, the Ariana Grande God is a Woman music video. But um, yeah, I love Ariana. So I think I pulled inspiration from her very uh, subconsciously. But I love it. I think it's beautiful and I'm really, really happy with this piece. So this next piece is titled Glamour and this piece is kind of like um, a continuation of the last piece that you saw. This piece is um, kind of like a zoom in on the bubbles um, that the hand was holding and uh, the symbolism behind this piece is it kind of just points out the different types of uh, virtual realities that we tend to submerge ourselves in and why it's so hard for us to kind of pull up from that is kind of what I was investigating um and because this is also part of my sustained investigation so that's what i was kind of investigating while um, i was doing that portfolio and so um in my description i kind of went through every bubble and explained kind of the question that surrounded them so the teacup one kind of represents um intoxication and how the very cool feeling of being drunk is kind of something we submerge ourselves into and we let ourselves buy into that even though it is very toxic for our body um and then the cloud one is simply just aesthetic beauty that we are drawn to and then um the middle one is kind of this fake uh glamorization of everything around us like the romanticization of life like so much of that um, and then the uh, one with the cracked um, watch is kind of like the idea of like time being muted because I think when as we go on Instagram as we do all these things you really feel as if time is very slow um, and then the last one is the illusion of wealth um, this is a bit of a long explanation but essentially I uh, wanted to use these to display bigger meanings. Okay, and so the next piece is called To Be Back There, and I uh, painted this in quarantine. Um, and it's kind of, it's actually this window right over here. And it's kind of, um, it's kind of me uh, being very, what's the word? Probably wrote it in here. Oh, catharsis. <laughs> um, it was kind of a cathartic way for me to get out my frustrated feelings about quarantine. And so this painting kind of shows my yearning for the outside world to come back to me. And so I painted the clouds kind of coming into the room again, into my room, because I wanted um, kind of for some types of, because I wanted the world to kind of come back to me. So that's the meaning behind this one. My teacher really liked this one. Um, she said it reminded her of like uh, a certain artist I forgot the name of, but 
she really liked it, so I'm really happy that um, it receives so much praise. And so yeah, this is what it looks like. Moving on, we have this piece, and um, as you can see, like around here, these pieces just aren't as um, good to me in quality as the ones I put in the beginning, so that's why they're kind of in the middle. <laughs> um, so this piece is called, well, there's clearly two pieces here, and so um, I wanted that juxtaposition, and so the piece on, um, I don't know what orientation this will be, essentially the brighter looking piece is called La Vie en Rose, and the um, kind of more dull looking piece is called Ennui. And so La Vie en Rose, this piece, represents kind of a romanticization of life. Um, the French phrase La Vie en Rose actually means to see the rose-colored glasses, and so I thought that was a perfect kind of connection between modern day like romanticization and then also this kind of um, very classical French term. Um, and so um, I kind of twisted that a little bit and instead of doing rose-colored glasses, I did like a mask of flowers over her face um, because I just aesthetically thought that would look better. Uh, and then the one on the, I don't know if it's the left, it's left to me. Uh, so the one on that side is representational, the one on that side is representative of um, ennui, which is kind of like a feeling of dissatisfaction of one's surroundings. And this is actually inspired by me at school. <laughs> um, I, when I was coming back from the summer and going into my senior year, I felt such a feeling of like, I don't know, it was it was very much so like a like a feeling of hate, it wasn't really hatred, but it was like dis, it was dissatisfaction, it was ennui, it was dissatisfaction from um, my high school, and I think uh, all of my classmates kind of had that feeling as well, it was very like somber, and it wasn't very fun, and I felt very, very um, dissatisfied with life in that moment those same four walls that I've seen for so long and the same hallways and everything. Um, it just, it made me feel like how I felt in this picture because um, it is a very, really inaccurate self-portrait. Um, and essentially the things around uh, me in that picture is uh, like trash that I painted. So I kind of felt like trash essentially is what I was trying to get out in this piece. Um, but I thought, connecting these two together in one kind of slide um, would be very interesting because uh, I felt both ways before and I just found it really um, interesting how life can kind of give you both. Moving on, this is um, my, this is called Of Those Around Me and it is my kind of like figure drawing submission. So our school sometimes will ask that you submit figure drawings to them. And um, when I was kind of doing my own research and browsing YouTube for other people's kind of um when i was browsing youtube for other people's portfolios a lot of them did submit like nude figure drawings and um there's a couple ways i think you can go about it you can like take a nude uh figure painting class figure painting you can take a nude figure drawing class or you can like sketch the ones that are from online and so at the time i was in 18 so i couldn't go to a figure drawing class and then I knew that the point of this activity was so that you don't sketch from a photograph, you sketch from life, was what they were trying to get at when they were telling you to do figure drawings. So because of that, I just decided to sketch the people around me because that's kind of all I had available at the time. Um, and so I made like a little compilation of every sketch that I did of everyone and I made it into a, a little video that kind of also showed like typography. <laughs> so I was trying to go for some design elements there as well. Um, and so uh, that is an interesting way to present figure drawings. That was probably a bit more fresh than just submitting um, kind of half-assed like figure studies and things like that or um, ones that were clearly done from photographs. So I'll play the video here. It's like a minute long. Um, so have fun enjoying that. Yeah. 
legal like a thing The curiosity Give the catalog you see Okay, moving on to my next piece This piece is called Milky Way And so, um, I think here I started kind of doing more pieces that were experimental again And so this piece is um, something that I had never known about until last summer where I um, got to experience this amazing experience called Governor's School and they taught me about cyanotypes and so cyanotypes is essentially a form of photography that was done a long long time ago and essentially what you do is you uh, have a piece of paper and you put a bunch of different types of fun shapes on there and then you uh, take that paper out into the sun and after the sun kind of uh, saturates it a little bit i don't really know the correct term but after that happens with the sun you uh take your piece and you kind of wash it out and let it dry and then it'll turn this really really beautiful blue color um and you kind of get like you kind of get like the leftover image of what you had initially put on there and so i um was very intrigued by this and so i decided to include it in my portfolio because um, it's one of the things I love the most about art. I feel like art is so, has a history that's so long and there's so many different methods and uh, processes of making art that I haven't been able to discover yet. And it's something that will always make me so excited about um, learning art and creating art. And I wanted to kind of uh, visually represent that sentiment somewhere in my portfolio, so I included it here. And so essentially, uh, this is just really where I talked about how much I loved the explorative kind of uh, side to art making. Moving on. This next piece is also very experimental, like I said. Um, these are where all the experimental pieces are. This one is called Microcosmos. Um, if you're a BTS fan, it is inspired by that BTS song. Um, because it reminded me kind of of the universe. Um, and so I, essentially what I did here is I had three pieces of glass and sadly, I don't think you can see the second one, but there's three pieces of glass here and they're all lined up behind one another. And um, the glass pieces I painted both front and back. So for the very, very first one, you can see the white is kind of on the front part of the glass and then the uh, pink and the blue is on the back. And I did that for all three. And I think it just made like a really beautiful image and it looks very um, galaxy-like and it's very much how I think the essence of my art looks um, without representative figures. It's essentially just very loose um, cloud-like uh, shapes. So that's this piece. Um, it's really just experimental. There's not too much of a deep meaning to it. So yeah. Ooh, I really like this piece. This piece is called I Am What I Am and I did write this in French so I'll put it here but I don't know how to read the French so if someone knows how to read the French for me please tell me that in the comments. <laughs> um, essentially this piece is um, a representative of my safe place. It's a very it's a fetal position. I sketched it when I was very sad and as I kept painting it I think I feel myself heal um, in kind of direct alignment with the, the growth of the painting. So at first, the background, the base of this girl was blue and kind of just submerged in that deep sadness. But then as I was healing myself, I kind of added these flower motifs onto her body. And so I think it just represents that as humans, we grow and we learn and we evolve and so just because like something is hurtful in the beginning time kind of heals it and um you can come out of it stronger and so i named it i am what i am because kind of the main reason of how i got through this hard time that i was going through and what the reason why i was so sad um the the, the way i got through it is I essentially reminded myself of all of my accomplishments and everything that I have done, everything that I'm capable of accomplishing, and that made me feel a lot better. And so I think the flowers on this drawing kind of represent that. 
represents the beauty in all of us and how that never changes no matter how sad we are and um, what emotional state we're in and um, to me that's really important to remember so I really like this piece because that okay so this one's kind of like a similar meaning it's called um, believe in yourself but in French again I don't know how to read these French words uh, but this piece again is very abstract but I really really like the way this piece turned out the flowers on this piece are the best flowers I've ever done in my entire life so I'm very proud of it um, but essentially this piece is um, I painted this kind of as I was worrying about my future because um, I was applying to college and I was very stressed about uh, where I would be in a couple of years even like in the next when you're applying to college you don't really know where you're gonna end up um, like next fall you know so I was really kind of feeling the the deep anxiety of not knowing where I was gonna go next and I'm someone who needs stability so that really really stressed me out but I painted this because I wanted to kind of get myself through that and so um, I kind of envisioned these flowers and this kind of painting as my future and so even though the future is unknown and it is very black and bleak um, not essentially it's just kind of blank um, I wanted to remind myself that there will always be beauty in whatever happens next and I can always make beauty occur in whatever happens next and that I would be okay in the end um, so I really like the way this piece came out as well and it's very vibrant and when I look at it I feel a sense of um, confidence again towards where I'm headed and so I really like this piece because of that <laughs> moving on to make the best of it so this piece I included because um it's kind of like a still life and I think it shows like a different side of uh, what I can do so I included it because of that um essentially these plants are drawn from life um I my mom collects a lot of plants and so this is kind of like a collage of all of my favorite of her plants um sadly now looking back a lot of these plants have died so that's kind of awkward but at the time these were like my favorite plants that uh she had and so i took all of them and i drew them in this very fun kind of style um i truly love the style of these plants and um, it's kind of, it's not really my style necessarily, but it is a style I enjoy exploring. And it was very fun to kind of work with the different colors. And so I also think it shows like color theory knowledge. So I thought it was a pretty good piece to include in there. Um, it's not too special though, so it exists. So, but moving on. <laughs> okay, so now we're getting into some pottery pieces. Um, I was in 3D design um, in the making while I was doing this portfolio and so I had like preliminary some pieces that I was making for that portfolio but um, I liked them enough to kind of include them in this portfolio so that's just kind of what I did and this is the first piece that I ever created for my 3D portfolio and it's called Fine Line and um, I don't know if you can tell but it's like a little baby inside an egg and this piece kind of represents um like a mother's love and how um my mother god bless her soul i really do love her a lot uh but she throughout my childhood was sort of sort of t teetered the line between um being very loving and protecting and then also just being like overbearing <laughs> um and now i can kind of like communicate with her better and talk through those differences but when i was young i very much so remember being a bit annoyed at how overprotective my mother was at times um but then also being very uh grateful that i had such a loving mother um essentially the the baby is being cradled but at the same time it kind of feels like a cage so that's kind of the message that is um included in this piece moving on this is another um, clay piece. This is actually polymer clay. The previous piece was um, actual ceramic clay. But this piece is called Vitality. And um, they're essentially inspired by fruits. I don't know if you can tell that. A lot of people can't. But for instance, like the red one is like a strawberry. The um, yellow one is, um, I believe, a banana. The blue one is very clearly um, a blueberry. 
the orange one is an orange and then the one um the green one is like a kiwi and so i wanted to include these because i think it shows that i can do packaging design i don't know um but i thought they were very cute and uh the inspiration behind them was uh kind of how my mom always brings me like fruits whenever i'm working on projects and homework and things like that and it's like her way of showing that she loves me and so they to me kind of feel like little energy balls because I get so much energy from that bowl of fruit while I'm very stressed on like studying for a test or like working on um, problem sets or something like that and so to kind of express that in a very kind of more beautiful visual way I made these little clay uh, power balls that were inspired by the fruit and I packaged them really beautifully and I think it looks very nice visually and yeah that's why I included this piece <laughs> okay moving on so this piece is kind of Regina because it's a crown and it's not like Regina Regina actually means queen in another language it's not based off of like Regina George the mean girl's character just clarifying um but this is also a wire sculpture it's the first wire sculpture I've ever done actually um, that's like an actual physical project and I was very proud of how this piece um, came out because I never did I've never done wearable art before so this is my first taste of that and it was very fun to kind of have a piece that was able to be kind of put into use and so I made this also during my summer at governor school and um, during governor school at the end of it there's like an exhibit that is put on and that shows kind of everyone's uh, creations from the entire summer and during that time a lot of my friends would uh, kind of put the crown on their heads and try it on and so that made me really really happy because uh, I think it it created a form of bonding between me my art and my friends and that to me was very very special and so yeah I really like this piece because of that memory attached to it I also think it shows skill that I can work with different mediums again and that I'm open to kind of exploring mediums of all different forms and so yeah. Moving on to the last piece of my portfolio. This piece is called Kefi which means spirit of joy in Greek and this piece is a paper sculpture. It's a bunch of paper sculptures kind of put together and um I really like this piece because it feels very like uh, contemporary and it feels like a piece that would kind of be in a museum um, so I was very proud of it when I created it and um, it's I did this also at Gov School and it's um, kind of a symbolic way for me to talk about my memories there I Gov School was a very very special experience to me and I'm gonna make a whole video all about that but Essentially, I um, felt so much gratitude towards the place and how much it's helped me grow and learn and kind of just be a person um, that I wanted to kind of create something that both encapsulate my times there, my gratitude towards the place. And I landed on doing kind of these flower-like cone shapes because I think cones feel like a vessel for um, memory holding, if that makes any sense. And then the flowers are just a motif that it's throughout my art so i think it was very representative of me but i wanted it to be kind of um this form of representation that i felt so much joy in this place and this is kind of like a visual representation of my joy and how much uh how grateful I felt towards everyone there and how I wish to kind of keep my memories um, of this place safe, um, like a little flower garden. And that's how I kind of wanted to keep my happiness memories safe in these uh, sculptures. And I also pointed out that I revised this a lot. So these are like the revision pieces. And so um, I kind of use that as a metaphor for how my memories of happiness will always be growing and how every moment of happiness in my life I will always keep as like a little memento in these kind of paper-like flowers. A lot of my art is very conceptual and they're very symbolic of certain things. So I tried my best to kind of explain all of that, but I don't know how well I did here. 
Um, but essentially that's the end of the portfolio, so I hope you guys enjoyed um, kind of going through that with me uh, and kind of seeing my pieces. If you are um, a prospective college student, I hope you got some inspiration from this and uh, you know, learned a little bit about how to structure your pieces. Um, I would say that my pieces all connected to me a lot and I only chose to put pieces in here that really either uh, was significant to me in some way <clears throat> or that showed like a technique or um, kind of a different side of me that maybe the uh, admission officers have not seen before. So yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, stay tuned for the second part where I talk about my stats and my extracurriculars, my essays, and all those fun things. Um, I'll see you next time, and yeah. Good luck applying to college if that's what you're doing.